everyone thank you so much for tuning in this is the word of joy and my name is Nemo Vori yes do you like my hair do you like my hair guys <laughs> shout out to Remy or Waka depending on I guess when you met her because she gives Waka or Remy for shout outs thanks for the braids I forgot the name of this braids um, it's very scanty not less not less braids so Thank you very much. I appreciate it. I think it looks good. We'll rock this for a while, you know, until my hair starts to itch too much. But yeah, thanks for tuning in. Um, great to see everyone. I pray and I hope you've been having a good summer so far. And we're moving right along. Here's July, like flying through. Before you know it, it'll be the end of the year. So we just want to thank God for His faithfulness for the first, you know, six months of the year and now we're in the second half and we believe that God who saw us through at the beginning will see us through the end successfully and more gloriously in Jesus name. All right, so pretty usual, if you like this video, click on the like button, show your friends and family members and finally do subscribe if you haven't already, join the Joy Squad and click on the notifications bell so you are notified when a new video comes up which is every Tuesday and Thursday, 6.30 a.m. Eastern time, super early, but you know, you need your word early. And for those of you in other time zones, it's like, I guess, middle of the day or wherever it is, it's perfect time wherever it is, okay? All right, so we're gonna go into um, taking captive every thought, all right? So, quick prayer as usual. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask that the Holy Spirit will be invited into this conversation and this place will only speak of that which you want us to hear, myself included, and which you have already empowered us to be able to do and obey to your glory and to our benefit and to the shame of the enemy. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay, so taking a big talk captive. Second Corinthians 10, verse 5 is 4 and 5. It's going to be our text. Second Corinthians 10, 4 and 5. All right, and I'm reading from the New King James Version of the Bible. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Okay, so there we have it. Bringing the weapons of our warfare, which we spoke about, um, the arm of God. And of course, the, the tools that we were given there, you know, the breastplate of righteousness, the belt of truth, Helmet of salvation, the shoes um, shod with gospel of peace, the shield of faith, praying in the spirit, all of that, all of that together is what helps us to do these things, like bring down the strongholds and to bring down every imagination that exalts itself above God, all right? Um, but where I'm kind of focusing on, like for this particular video, is to bring every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. So taking captive, remember like back in the um, Old Testament days, whenever they took like captives, it was like, you don't have any say in anything. Remember Daniel, even what you eat. Because they were like, this is what you guys are going to eat according to the king. This is what you guys are going to learn. This is what you guys are going to do. Like they were captives. They were not free. They were not, you know, they were like, you know, they were slaves pretty much. So your time, your food, where you slept, what you, what you ate, nothing was your own free will. It was dictated to you. So can you imagine if you did that, thought about that same analogy that actually reminds me of secondary school, right? Like, you have to wear uniforms, you have to wake up at 5.45, you have to do morning duty, you have to eat like yaman oil on Saturday morning, and beans and pop on Friday morning. Like, everything was specifically dictated. We were not captives, we were students, but you know, it's similar. You don't really have any freedom of anything. I think in some schools, they even used to dictate like, the kind of hair the girls will wear, like every week. We're all gonna do baskets. We're all gonna do shugu and front, you know, like they would dictate like back in the day, you know, you guys don't relate, can't relate now. This is like 90s, 90s, early 90s. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of how it is where that thing or person that's been captive doesn't really have control over anything or what they want. So can you imagine if like you really did that to your thoughts, right? Like every thought, so bringing every thought captive, not like, oh, you know, the really wild ones, not like every thought. Think about that, like all the little ones that just fly in there. I want to cook today. I want to be nice to that lady. She was mean to me yesterday. I want to forgive this person. I don't feel like cleaning my house. I'm just so lazy. I'll do it next week. You know, like every thought, not just the spiritual thoughts. That's how I'm reading it. Every thought has to come and become captive to the obedience of Christ. So you bring it forward like, okay, why don't I want to do this? Why do I feel this way? If the Bible says something contrary, then it's like, <laughs> I need to captivate that sort of be like, no. I know you don't feel like doing it. I know you don't think that lady was nice, but no. 
This is not about you. We are bringing you captive. You don't, you do not make the rules and you don't just go free willy doing whatever you want, right? Just like how, like, I go to school, I couldn't, like, sleep whenever I want and, you know, eat whatever I wanted, whenever I wanted. I had to do that at a certain time. Same thing you can do to your thoughts and just be like, no, we're not going to do that right now. Oh, this reminds me of Jessica. If you watch the video, we're not going to do that right now. Um, yeah, so you tell your thoughts. We're not going to do this because I'm bringing you captive. And I tell you, truly, I've been doing this, like, recently where... If something comes up like when I plan a wedding or an event and there's something stressful happening, I don't want to go to the, oh my God, there's going to be a problem, da, da, da. Like the first thing is like, you know what? God is able. God is able. We can walk through this. And like it's situations that feel like it's just, there's no way. You don't have any way out. We've already asked like 10 times. They said no. They said no. By the time like I bring myself to that place where my thoughts are captive and saying God is able, forget what you know about this situation and this, the rules, the whatever, I get like instantaneously then an opposite reaction of what would normally have happened. And it's like, wow, Holy Spirit heard that. And yes, God did make a way because I felt like we can do this. God can, we can do this. Holy Spirit, you may give me the power. I can do this. I can make this happen. I'm a problem solver. I'll figure it out and we will figure it out. Rather than cowering and going, well, you know, it's too much, too much burden, too much craziness. Let's drop it. Let's leave it. Let's go to plan B. But you know, like that's just an example for myself of how I'm not allowed like thoughts to then take over and say, well, this is it, give up. Okay. Um, and why is it important to bring your thoughts into captivity of Christ? Because the, you know, like it says in, I think it's Proverbs 23 verse seven, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Yep. So as he thinks in his heart, so is he. So the thoughts that you think are eventually become you, right? So when I, uh, for instance, now I'm not an Olympian, but the Olympian one day they thought in their mind, I would run a race. I want to be a runner. I want to do the swimming activities. I want to, you know, do track and field. I want to do the javelin, like whatever it is. It was once a thought. It wasn't just like something that just stuck on their face. It was a thought. And then the thought became an action. And it actually became who they were. Because in the end, that's it. They're like, oh, that's a runner. Oh, that's a baker. Oh, that's an event planner. Oh, that's a doctor. All these things started with thoughts, right? So there were probably other thoughts that you had and you kicked them out and I kicked them out and we're like, no, that's not what I want. I don't really want to do th this career. Or I don't want to go into that. Or I don't want to move over there. All these are thoughts. So just imagine all the thoughts that you've ever had in your whole life and how all of that can culminate into your action and who you are. And that is why bringing every thought into captivity is very important because it then, you know, your thoughts, like it says, become who you are. That's who you are. What you're thinking is who you are. So for us to take that victory over the enemy, the first place is right here, right? In your mind. Make sure your thoughts are in alignment. Don't give place to the enemy for anything. If there's like a little doubt or a little like crack, then you're going to allow Remember like Eve, like once she was like, oh yeah, maybe I can be wise. That was a thought that the devil introduced to her. Like, you know, maybe if you ate this fruit, you'll become wise and you will know and be like God. And that was a thought that came in and she didn't say, yeah, but it's disobedience. I don't want to disobey God and I'm not going to do that. She didn't do that. She did not bring it down. She did not like bring it captive. And so it held its place and then it became sin and all that which we know happened with the rest of history. Um, so I don't want to make this a long video. I'll probably do another one now that says, um, you know, like the second part of it. So how do we take these thoughts captive? Yes, we know to do that. We know that we want to make sure that um, our thoughts don't take over, no matter what they are, unless they are aligned with, with the Bible, unless they are aligned with the knowledge of God, those thoughts need to be shut down immediately because they're going to become the actions which become a you and you don't want that, right? If it's the wrong thoughts. If it's good, awesome, amazing, liberating and the glorious thoughts that give glory to God, then yes, please keep on thinking it. Keep on thinking. Remember when... um. Paul says, you know, think on these things, whatever things are true, whatever things are pure, whatever things are of God, good in virtue. That's why he's saying that. And I have to find the verse. But we'll talk about that in the next video. But this is why, like, thinking about those things makes us who those things are and gives glory to God, edifies God, and shames the devil. All right? So, thank you. It's been a quick one. I appreciate you tuning in. My name is Nemo Vore. This is The Word With Joy. Send me a message if you need to. And leave comments. Questions in the in the section, in the comment section. I always have trouble saying that in the comment section. Leave your comments or questions. Now get to those. All right. So God bless you. Have a great day. Bye.